So I created a momentum indicator that shows you the difference in the current bar closing price versus a moving average. However, it's not that useful as a graphical study because I mean, you can just look at the moving average and see this momentum. So instead, what if we extrapolate this data and plug it into a scanner so that we can only return stocks either above or below certain momentum values from this indicator. So in today's video, we are going to build those two scanners step by step, as well as build this custom column on the right here that will show you that difference value, as well as highlight the cell if above or below a certain amount. And I'm gonna give you all this for free. All I ask in return, please take the half second to hit like, and subscribe if you haven't already. So this indicator itself is very, very simple. It is the current bar closing price minus the average closing price over the last 20 bars. And we could of course come in and we could change that length if we wanted to. Of course, when you create these scanners yourselves, if you would like to change the average length, if you're a more long-term trader, make it higher. If you're a shorter term trader, make it smaller do whatever you find works best for you, right? But that is the value being plotted down here on this histogram chart, whether of course being below zero as these red bars, above zero being the green bars. Once again, the difference in the closing price minus the average closing price over the last X number of bars. And on my study here, I've got some arrows. I'm kind of working on some buy and sell signals based off of this study. But for today, we're just going to utilize the value and plug it into some scanners and columns. So of course, underneath of the scan tab and then the stock hacker sub tab, I have a couple of stock filters turned on just to sort of get rid of some of the riffraff, the crap stocks we don't want to see. Closing price must be at least 50 cents. There must be a market cap that is currently existing for the company and the daily volume must be greater than 50,000. You can of course change this to however type of stock you want to see. You can add filter stock and choose from this giant list of dropdown to narrow your results to only certain types of stocks. But to build our custom condition for our momentum scanner here. I'm gonna go back under add filter, but now rather than stock, I'm going to go down to study and I'm gonna click on this little pencil here. Now I'm in the scanner custom filter. I'm gonna hop in to the ThinkScript editor and we are going to build out our custom condition. Once again, it's very, very simple. The current closing price, simply type in close, Thinkorswim will auto return that value to you. Very nice. There's also a built in average function within Thinkorswim. So we don't even have to like do the math here. We just have to call the function and give it the correct parameter, tell it which data to use, right? So close minus, we want the average function and the two parameters of the average function are data and length. So we of course want to look at the average closing price. That's the data we wanna look at. Separate your parameters with a comma over the last 20 bars. That is the default length I'm going to go with. You, once again, you can choose your own length here. Whatever you find works best for yourself and test it, right? Take a look at how 20 looks, take a look at how 100 looks, take a look at how five looks and see what type of stocks you would like to see for yourself. So close minus average closing of the last 20 bars. Now for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and only look at stocks where this value is greater than 10. So the current closing price is 10 points higher than the average closing price over the last 20 bars. Once again, completely subjective, feel free to mess with this integer, change this value to return the types of moves that you want to see. Now, as I hit okay and I hit scan, we will see stocks that are only at least 10 points 
over the average price of the last 20. Now, that is, of course, confirmed because I currently have my watch list column turned on and they are all green, meaning they are all 10 points above. Let's go ahead and just flip through a couple of them. The first being AMD. Our current value on our visual indicator is 14.6, of course, over 10. And the current closing price is at 170.9, while the 20 moving average is at 156 point. Two. Next on the list was JD. China stocks are going insane right now. Wow, I hadn't even noticed how insane JD itself was going. Current closing price is 44 point, or sorry, 46.97. Current 20 simple moving average, 33.14. Our difference value then being 13.8. Of course, greater than 10. Of course, showing on our scanner. And look, at the kind of stocks it's showing. I mean, you might not have even known JD was going this insane. I didn't. I knew China stocks were really strong. JD, of course, being a Chinese stock, but I had no eyes on this one specifically until we just ran this momentum scanner. And that is the power of a scanner like this. Now, this next part may be obvious, but just so you have a visual learning tool to help you. You can also come in to this study filter. I'm gonna click back on the pencil icon to reopen our editor. And instead of our close minus the average close of the last 20 being greater than 10, let's make it less than negative 10. So now we will only be returned stocks where the current closing price is 10 points below the average closing price over the last 20. Stock number one, ADTX. If we go ahead and look at this one, wow, what a crush. Um, this stock is currently trading at 1.6. Its 20 simple moving average is at 12, which puts its value here at negative 10.4, obviously being less than negative 10, so showing on the scanner. Next, we have Microsoft. This is where you can start to utilize this scanner, you run a scan like this and you notice some big names. I mean, Microsoft is the, if not, I think it might be the number one market cap company in the world right now. If it's not one, it's two with Apple. They kind of flip flop back and forth, but it's either the first or second largest company in the world by market cap. And you now know it is currently trading 10 points lower than where it has been trading on average over the last 20 bars. So, hey, maybe that's one we do a little research on. Why is it dipping? Is it a good dip opportunity? Scanner like this helps return to you that information and provide you with those opportunities. Now, let's say you don't only want to see stocks that are either well above or well below their average closing price over the last X bars, but you would like to know that information while running other scanners. So you're running any of your other scanners, pulling that sort of information filtering by those stocks, but you can have this column on that is showing you the difference in the current close minus that average over the last X bars. And it will also paint green or red if above or below your set value. Let's go ahead and build that now. To add custom columns to scanners, you need to click on this very little cog next to your scan headers. If I click on this and go into customize, I get my list of available columns alongside of my current set. If you notice all of these available items with locks on their scrolls like this, these are think script codes, but that are provided to you by Thinkorswim themselves. In order to build your own, what you're going to do is you're going to look up custom and you're going to have something like custom zero through custom 19 or something like that. And you can simply choose any of those and click on the scroll to open your ThinkScript editor and begin building. Now, mine looks a little bit different because I'm a madman and I've already used every single one of my custom available uh, options. So I'm just gonna have to write over something I've already created. Let's write over this name one because I don't even remember what I was doing with this. So I'm gonna delete everything that's here and we're going to begin building out this column. First thing we need to do here is declare a variable and we're going to declare the variable with the keyword plot as that keyword is what maybe obviously makes the value appear 
on your chart or scanner, right? So I'm going to type in plot. You can name your variable, whatever you would like. I'm just going to go with X and then we're going to initialize it with a value. So equal to. And now we already know the equation for the value that we would like to be plotted in this column, right? It's the same as we built out in the scanner itself. Close minus the average close over the last 20 bars. End your line of code with a semicolon as you always do and all your errors go away. Of course, slightly differently than the scanner, we're not setting to only see stocks where this value is above 10 or less than negative 10. We just want to see at all this value. So if I go ahead and hit apply, my column is named name. Once again, don't know why. Name it whatever you would like. You can drag it over or you can double click on it to add it to your current set. Hit OK. You now have that value plotted on a watch list column within your scanner. But you don't have it yet coloring if above or below certain values. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So hopping back into our cog, back into customize, I'm going to click on the scroll of our custom column here. And we are going to call in now a look and feel function, which is assign background color. Now, this is a function that accepts one parameter of color. Great. But... I'm going to use a conditional statement here to, so that we only need this one function to generate both either our green, red, or non-colored cells. Now, the conditional function here, and we're going to do a nested conditional function. So this might sound a little bit complicated. First off, uh, if you don't care about coding, you don't need to understand this. Just copy what I type in, you'll have the indicator good to go. Second, if you are trying to understand coding practices a little bit while watching my videos, if statements are really simple, if, then, else. Just remember those three keywords, and we are going to nest. So we are going to do if, then, else, and then another if, then, else. You'll see as we get into it here a little bit. So let's open our parentheses so that the machine knows that we're working with the function and let's enter in our color parameter. If X, this is our variable that we have initialized with our value, remember, of the closing price minus the average close over the last 20. Since we wrote that var variable in already earlier in the code, we can now call it in this line of code. So if that value, if x is greater than 10, then we want the color to be green. Now, I can't just type in green here. The machine thinkorswim does not know what green is. It's not a it's not a value that is stored within thinkorswim natively. It is a value that is stored inside of the color data type. So, I must let the machine know that utilizing dot notation. Once again, if all this is way too confusing for a video like this, um, you, who cares? You don't have to remember it. Just type in what I type in. I'm just trying to provide some value for maybe some of those out there trying to learn a little bit about coding in Thinkorswim. So I'm going to type in color.green. This is the data type of color, which holds multiple values, of course, one of which being green. So now once I finish this line of code, there will be no errors as the machine knows to look for this green value inside of the color data type where it exists. Now, what is the third keyword of my if conditional statement? If, then, else, right? Else is, hey, if this value isn't true, then what would you like the parameter to be set to? So we're going to do else. Remember, though, we have three potential outcomes here, green, red, or non-colored. So I'm going to need to nest if statements. I'm going to have to use another if statement here. So if then else, if X is less than negative 10, then color dot red else. Remember still if then else, if then else, this is now my, Hey, if the value isn't either greater than 10 or less than negative 10, what would you like the color to be? We can use color dot current, which is just how you hey, don't change the color at all. Just do whatever the normal appearance settings are set to. 
So if I go ahead now and hit apply, you will notice the cells are changing when the value is greater than 10 or less than negative 10. There may not be any examples of less than negative 10 on this scanner. Let me run a more bearish scanner to give you uh, examples of red cells. There's still no red cells. Okay, let me, you know what? If I just get rid of this and we just look at the whole thing, give me a red cell, please. So I can show the, show the example on this, on the video. Way there we go. There is also red cells, but you'll notice these values get really difficult to read now. Hey, you know, the, the numbers themselves are still white. So when the cell is either red or especially if it's green, I mean, you can't see that value at all. You can't really read it. So let's write another line of look and feel code inside of our custom column here to change those values to make it a little bit more readable. So hopping back into our custom column here, we are going to use another look and feel function. This one called assign value color, and we can pretty much plug in this exact same conditional formatting that we used for the background color. It's almost that easy that we just have to copy paste minus, you know, change the colors a little bit. But there's one very important step here. The assign background color function isn't acting upon anything, right? It is just changing the entire background based off of the parameters. But assign value color is going to act upon the value, right? So it needs to know what value it's acting upon. So once again, much like we use dot notation so that the machine knew to look for the green value inside of the color data type, we are going to use dot notation to let the machine know to use the assign value color look and feel function on our value that we have declared and initialized under the variable named X. So X dot assign value color. And once again, if X is greater than 10, then I'm going to go ahead and do color dot black. Else if X is less than negative 10, then color dot black else color dot current. Go ahead and close our parentheses and end our line of code with a semicolon. So this is just, hey, if it's going to be green, then make the text black. Or if it's going to be red, then make the text black else don't change the text, AKA leave it that white color. If I hit apply now, you will notice those changes being made. This just makes it more easily readable within the colored cells, right? Now, I believe there are two different types of people watching a video like this. Those that are interested in learning ThinkScript so that they can create their own custom codes. And then those that just want to borrow the ideas of the videos so that they can have these own custom codes within their platform. Well, my website, daytradingstrategies.net is perfect for both of those people because in any of these strategies, scanners, indicators, watch list columns, etc., you're going to get a share link, which you can simply copy and then back within your Thinkorswim platform from setup, open shared item. You simply paste it in, preview and import. Then from your studies tab, you will have the study or strategy or scanner all under the DTS prefix. And of course, once you have the scanner in, all you need to do is click on this cog here and you can access the source code. So whether you're interested in just accessing all of my custom codes or learning the source code of my custom codes so that you can then start to get an idea of how these things are written. This is a great, I mean, the best way to educate yourself on ThinkScript, on coding, really on anything is to look at someone who's been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of hours, which I have been doing with Thinkorswim coding. You can see all the work I've done, and this will be a great way to help teach you how to do it yourself. So head on over to daytradingstrategies.net. There's a link in the description of this video. Sign up today. You get access to all of my codes for one low price. Become a better trader immediately. With all that being said, I'll catch you all in the next video.